This video is an introduction to vectors, um, how to draw vectors, how to describe them, just kind of basically setting the foundation for what is a vector, what's not a vector, and how do we describe them, some new vocabulary to describe features of a vector. So you should be able to describe different features of a vector, you should be able to draw a vector, and you should understand what the term vector space means after watching this video. So a vector is basically, think of it as like a tool to store information. There's lots of different um, examples of vectors that you'll encounter in various fields. So like in computer science, a vector um, can, can mean, it's basically like an array that holds a lot of information in different, um, different cells or different uh, places. Um, in physics, a vector is typically it means that it's a, a physical quantity um, that is described by both a direction and a magnitude. And so we're going to we're going to keep ourselves only talking about what we call arrow type vectors. So we're going to feature arrow type vectors. But just to make you aware that vectors appear in lots of different contexts in a lot of different fields, especially in computer science. Um, and in other sciences. So think of a vector as storing information in an organized way. And in this example, arrow type vectors store two pieces of information, a magnitude and a direction. Um, things that are not vectors, so if something is not a vector, it's probably a scalar. A scalar is a fancy word that just means a number. All your life you've basically been dealing with scalars um, and so if a quantity does not have a direction, then that means that it's a scalar. So think of a scalar as just a number. A scalar can be any number at all. It can be positive or negative. So the example I would give you um, for a common scalar quantity would be like temperature. Temperature can be positive or negative. I could tell you that it's 80 degrees outside, but it wouldn't make any sense to you if I said it's 80 degrees outside east. That doesn't make any sense. The, the direction east doesn't really add any information to, the, to that um, quantity of temperature. It doesn't make any sense. Another example would be money. You can have positive $100 and you can have negative $100. It's called being in debt. But you can't be negative $100 west. So money is another example of a physical quantity that has um, value but no direction. So scalars are just numbers. They can be positive or negative. Some properties of arrow type vectors. From now on, I'm just gonna say vectors. You can assume that I'm always talking about arrow type vectors. Um, we call them arrow type vectors because we're going to represent these physical quantities as arrows. So a vector, quantity, like um, for the example, force is a vector. You can push on something and you push in a specific direction with a certain amount of force. And so you can describe that physical quantity as an arrow. That arrow has a tip and a tail. So let's say that's my arrow right here. And the tip of the arrow is where like the pointy part of the arrow is. And the tail of the arrow is where the arrow started. So there's a tip and a tail. The tip is the pointy part of that arrow. You always want to name your vectors and we give them a special symbol to really like emphasize that this is a vector quantity. So the name of the vector, so let's say I have another vector here pointing kind of down and to the right. I'm gonna name this one Bob and to really emphasize that Bob is a vector, you put an arrow on top of Bob. And it's kind of convention to just draw like the top part of the arrow. Notice there, I didn't draw like the full tip of the arrow on there. It's just kind of a shorthand to kind of name Bob like that and just kind of put an arrow, a part of an arrow on top of him. Um, but if you wanted to write it out as Bob with a full arrow, that's totally fine. You'll just notice that it takes a little while longer to write that. So it's kind of a shorthand way of kind of putting an arrow symbol on top of it. That denotes that the name Bob is describing a vector quantity. So always name your vectors, draw that name next to the arrow that um, represents the, the vector quantity, 
and put a symbol on top of the name to make sure that you are showing that this is a vector. Another feature of a vector um, is something called the norm or the length or the magnitude of the vector. All of these things mean the same thing. So magnitude, length, and norm, they're all speaking about um, the, the amount of the vector. So in a representation where we're drawing these vectors and arrows, it's the length of the arrow that symbolizes the amount of the vector or the magnitude or the norm of that vector. So in this case, let's, let's compare a couple of vectors here. This is vector, I'm just going to call it vector A. Here's vector B. And here's vector C. Notice that these three vectors, each of them has a different length um, of the vector, which means that their norms are different. The norm of a vector describes the length of the vector when you're drawing it as an arrow. Um, and a length can only be a positive number. So norms, magnitudes, lengths are always going to be positive numbers, regardless of how the vector is pointing. So if I draw another vector here, let's call this vector D. Vector D and vector B have the same length. They're pointing in different directions, but they have the same physical length of their arrows, which means they have the same norm or same magnitude. The direction of the vector, remember that a, a vector quantity has a magnitude and a direction. The direction of the vector is just symbolized by how that arrow is pointing. So that vector is pointing kind of up and to the right. I'll call that vector E. Vector F is kind of pointing down and to the right. So all these vectors, they have a norm, they, so they have a length of the arrow, and the vector, however the tip is pointing, that denotes the direction of the vector. All right, um, some more uh, important information is something called vector space. All of these vectors that I was drawing, um, like I said, they symbolize, these arrows symbolize different physical quantities. And so when we're, when we're symbolizing these different physical quantities, we've now entered what we call vector space. We are representing real physical quantities. I gave you the example of force. Other vector quantities are like um, velocity, so like how fast you're moving and in what direction. These are like physical quantities that exist in the real world, but we are going to symbolize them in vector space as just arrows. And the length of those arrows denotes um, the value or the norm or the magnitude of those quantities. And the direction of those arrows tells you about the direction of those quantities. So vector space, it's a construct. It's not a real thing. It's, it's a way for us to represent real things. That's how we're drawing these arrows. They're all symbols of different physical quantities. So vector space is not the same as real space. Um, you're allowed to do some things in vector space that you couldn't do in real space. So let me give you an example here. Um, this is real space. In this real space, I have two people that are, um, Chris is pushing on a box and Julia is pulling on a box. So they are exerting forces on this box. And like I said, force is a physical quantity that is a vector. You apply a certain amount of force and you apply it in a certain direction. So we want to symbolize these vectors that are going on in real space, but we wanna put them into vector space so that we can draw them as arrows and by doing that, we can compare the lengths of the arrows and we can compare the directions of the arrows and we can perform mathematical operations on these arrows, but doing it in vector space. So here's an example, um, this particular vector space that I have in the green box here. This is displacement vector space. Displacement means a change in position. So each of those things in real space is gonna move and I can denote or I can symbolize how they moved by using these displacement vector arrows. And you can see the different displacements for each of the things in real space. A different vector space I could enter um, describes the velocity of each of those things in real space. So in the blue box here, that's a velocity vector space. And notice here that each of those vectors in the blue box, 
are velocity vectors. They're representing the physical quantity of velocity. And so you could compare the length of each of those arrows to each other, and you could see that the velocity of the box is bigger, sorry, the magnitude of the velocity of the box is bigger than the magnitude of the velocity of Julia, because the box's arrow is longer than Julia's arrow. So I know that that box is, is moving faster than Julia. One more vector space I could maybe extract from this example um, is forces. Like I said, they're each exerting a force on the box and the, the ground is exerting a force on the box. Friction is exerting a force on the box. The earth is exerting a force on the box. So you can compare the magnitude of each of these forces to each other in vector space by comparing the lengths of their arrows. And you can describe the directions of these uh, vectors in vector space by looking at the directions of the arrows. In vector space, you're allowed to pick up a vector and move it around anywhere you want, and it doesn't change the vector. It's something called translation. So you can pick up the vector and move it. What you cannot do is turn the vector or stretch it out or make it smaller. So you can translate, which means to pick up and move it without rotating or changing the length of the arrow. Because if you change the length, that means you're changing the norm. If you rotate that arrow, you're changing the direction. So in vector space, you're allowed to pick vectors up, move them how you want, as long as you don't change their magnitude or direction, which is something you can't do in real space, obviously. So um, just a couple other things I wanna talk about here is that vectors describe real physical quantities regardless of the things that are going on around them, how you choose to describe those physical quantities does not change the physical quantities. So maybe your choice of coordinate systems, we'll talk about various coordinate systems or where you put your origin, stuff like that. That does not affect real things. So a vector is a real thing um, that exists in the real world and it does not change regardless of how you choose to describe it. Like I said, vectors can be translated without being affected. So you can, pick thing, you can pick vectors up and move them around in vector space as long as you don't um, change their length or you don't change their direction. And this, this last point I think seems kind of obvious, but I wanna say it that if two vectors have the same direction and they have the same magnitude, they are the same vector. So just remember that a vector is completely described by its magnitude and its direction. So if any vectors share both of those quantities, they are equal to each other. They are the same vector. So to close this video out, I just wanna work on that example problem that's found at the beginning of your conceptual reference material um, page. I have two vectors here, M and N, drawn for me. And I have some information about these vectors. They live in vector space along with another vector called vector P. I know that vector M has a magnitude twice that of vector P, and vector N points in the opposite direction as vector P. So based on what I know about M and N, let's try to sketch or draw or graphically represent, that phrase graphically represent, it just means to draw. So let's use the information that M has a magnitude twice that of P. So that means that vector M is twice as long as vector P. So vector P has a magnitude that should be just about like this big. It's half of vector M. And I know that N points in the opposite direction as P. So I see N is pointing up and to the left, which means that P must be pointing down and to the right. That would be exactly opposite or 180 degrees away from vector n. And so the length there of vector p, I tried to do it my best I could to keep it about half the length of vector m. That's my best answer for vector p. So I'll redraw it. Remember, I'm allowed to pick vector p up and move it wherever I want. Here is vector p. It's pointing down and to the right, exactly opposite to vector n and it is approximately half as big as vector M that was drawn here. So there's my answer. There's vector P in this vector space. So I hope you learned a little bit about um, graphically representing vectors and describing vectors uh, as an introduction.